The BBC has a global reach like no other news outlet. However, it also has its problems, strict impartiality being one, which I assume, John, were instrumental in you seeking a new career direction. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly a year on from your departure, how do you think the BBC needs to change in the future if it's to maintain its integrity and influence? What a great question. Well, um, thank you for that. Uh, I mean, part of the reason I left the BBC, you're right. I thought that they were getting the definition of impartiality wrong, um, by which I mean, and I think that public broadcasters around the world are struggling with this, whether it's here in mm -hmm. Australia or in Britain as well. But, you know, when I was covering Donald Trump at the White House, and something that was... I won the 2020 election. No, you didn't. The votes didn't stack up, and there's no... Sometimes there are issues where there is not, on the one hand, on the other. Some people say two plus two is four. Others say two plus two is six. Only time will tell. John Fraser, <laughs> BBC News, Westminster. <laughs> no, two plus two is four. And we've got to be able to have the confidence to say that. And I think, sometimes think that public broadcasters, public service broadcasters, struggle with that a bit and just kind and of get themselves tied into knots. And I saw it, I thought, felt over the Brexit debate. Well, I was, was going to get to that. What, 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 how did that play out, the idea of impartiality both sides in a, in a referendum like Brexit? So there was a false equivalence that took place whereby you'd say, well, some economists say it's going to be a catastrophe for the UK economy. Others say it's going to be great. Mm. Actually, nearly every <laughs> eminent economist said it was going to be bad and, you know, seven years after the vote on Brexit, it's not going that well. Um, whereas you had to struggle to find the people who would say Brexit is going to be a liberation for the, the UK economy. And so I th sometimes think that we give people a misleading impression in news by acting as if they're... I mean, what is the equivalence of... Some people say that Ukraine has been badly done by by the invasion of Russia, but others would say, no, there, you know, <laughs> it was wrong. It was a flagrant breach of international law that Russia went across the border of Ukraine. And I think sometimes we need to have the boldness to say things. I believe in impartiality, but I think it needs to be a bit more muscular and a bit more aggressive sometimes mm. because there is so much false information out there. Just, 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 just hold that thought, please. Because I, I, I do want to go to Dorinda because um, you know, John raised the impact of media coverage and impartiality on Brexit. And I'm just wondering, we're in a, facing a referendum this year over The Voice. How are you seeing that play out in the media debate and the way it's being framed around questions of impartiality? Who gets to speak on the other hand, on this hand? How do you think it's, it's impacting it so well, far? Well, I think it's very easy, uh, Stan, and I want to thank Tony for the, for the question. And um, I think it can be hijacked very, very easily. And I think that, um, you know, giving a plug for uh, the ABC, the independent, you know, it should be well resourced. It, 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 it basically <laughs> creates an important platform and particularly for our mobs in regional mm. rural and remote areas you know having access to that information being able to get that information that is impartial that is independent but also we need to make sure that it's well resourced and we see that particularly in uh, emergency uh, management and disasters like floods and bushfires this is why it's so important it is so critical and in the voice context it's absolutely critical because we need to hear all sides sides of that to be able to remain impartial. Keith. No, thank you for that. And congratulations to Dorinda yeah, on her Dorinda. elevation today. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, look, we are having a referendum here, and I'll take the word muscular that you used about defending what's right. We've got to be very careful about that. And I'll give an example from the US election. And I agree, you know, there was, there was a result and it should be respected by those who didn't succeed. But the Hunter Biden story was put aside as fake news, but it was... Joe Biden's son. That's and right. And, and it, was, it was a legitimate story that should have been aired in the United States, but people decided they shouldn't hear it. We should never have that in a democracy. So in this coming referendum, I'm really pleased to see that the Albanese government is going to have a pamphlet go out to all households showing a yes and a no case. And, and no criticism of, of you... 
st Stan and the ABC, but I, I remember once there was We're a... We're big enough to take it, Keith. Yeah, I'm going to have to take it. But <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to take there. your shot. <laughs> I remember... Uh, you know, a long-time viewer, but I remember watching an episode that you did on The Voice, and there was no one speaking against it. And, and that's changed, but we should always trust Australians with hearing both sides of an argument, even on the ABC. And sometimes we ask and people don't turn up. But you did tonight, Keith, and thank I, I, I thank you for it. Um, <laughs> we can only speak to the people who will come on.